So if you are on Windows 10 or a very new version of Windows, then you may be able to use the SSH command instead of using PuTTY to log onto your EC2 instance. So I have a Windows 10 right here and I want to show you how we can do it. So if you go to PowerShell, for example, and you type SSH, and then you get this command back, the usage of SSH and a lot of options, that means that you have access to SSH. If you don't have PowerShell, you just have the command line editor and you type SSH, you see the exact same thing, that means that you have SSH. If you see SSH command not found, that means that you don't have SSH installed on your Windows and that means that you will have to use PuTTY as we saw in the previous lecture to connect to your EC2 instance. But say you have the SSH command, then we can do the exact same command as what we do on a Linux or a Mac computer to log on to our EC2 instance. So what we have to do is do SSH minus I, and I stands for identity file. So we need to provide the location of our identity file. For me, this is my EC2 tutorial.pem file, and I'm just going to copy the entire location. So the location right here is copied, and I'll paste it here and then I'll add the EC2 tutorial.pem. Okay, next we have to decide what user we are going to use to connect to our EC2 instance. So if we go back to our EC2 instance, we launched an Amazon Linux 2 AMI, so the, EC, the user to log on to the EC2 machine is always EC2 user. That is something you have to do when you, young, when you use Amazon Linux. This is why we have EC2 user in here. And then at, which corresponds to the IP of the machine. So here we go to the public IPv4 and you'll copy it. And remember that this IP will change if you restart your machine, uh, start and stop. So we'll just paste this here and here we go. So now I've done SSH minus I, the whole path to the PEM file, and then the EC2 user because we use Amazon Linux 2 at the IP of our machine. Let's press enter. And we're prompted with the fact that we want to verify the authenticity of the host. Because we're never connected to it before, the Windows needs to know that we can trust this host. So I'm just going to say yes and press enter. And now I get an error. Warning, unprotected private key file. So you may or may not get it, but it's important that if you get it, you know how to resolve it. So this is the same problem that we have when we have a Linux or a Mac. We want the private key file, so the PEM file, to be protected correctly and to have the correct permissions. And so how do we fix this on Linux and Mac? We use a command called chmod, but for Windows, this chmod command does not exist. Therefore, we need to use something else. So I'm going to clear the screen, and we'll have the command ready already. But I'm going to go to my PEM file, so right here in my downloads, right-click and click on Properties, and then I'm going to go to Security. And in here, we can see who has access to this key. But in there, there is an Advanced tab. So click on Advanced, and you are getting into the advanced security setting. So the first thing you have to do is make sure that the owner of this key is yourself. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to look for Stefan and check the names and here I am. I make myself an owner of this key. So the owner has to be you. And then you should remove any other, uh, other uh, user. So this one I can't remove and this one I can't remove as well. Uh, because it has inheritance. So I need to disable inheritance right here. And I say, okay, convert uh, inherited permissions into explicit permissions. And now I can remove the system and I can remove the administrator. So here now this file, ec 2 has inheritance disabled and only me is able to control this file. So I'll click on apply. And then I have said, okay. Now in here, I need to make sure I have full control. So yes, I do have full control. This is perfect. And if I didn't, I could click on permissions and then add myself to full control. So now we have done something that's so that the properties of the security file is just us having full control over this file. So that's perfect. And now if we try this command again and press enter, we are logged on to our Amazon Linux 2 EC2 instance. And the reason it worked now is that we had the right permissions for security and we were not prompted with a yes, no question because we already told Windows to trust this EC2 instance and this IP. So this is really cool. Now what I can do is show you that it works exactly on the command line. So I go to the command line and paste the command. Oops, let me do it again. I'm going to the command line, pay, copy this and paste this, press enter. And again, it will work right away. Again, no yes, no question to enter the instance because Windows already trusts that instance and no security error because we had fixed the security for this download. So now you've seen how to do it on Windows using SSH command. Hopefully that covers all the use cases you may have and all the issues you may encounter. And you have to remember that you can only do this on Windows 10 
on Mac or Linux, but if you have an older version of Windows, you cannot install SSH on it. You have to use Apache, as we saw in the previous lecture, to log on to your EC2 instance backed by Amazon Linux 2. So that's it for this lecture. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that was really helpful, and I will see you in the next lecture.